How y'all doing today? Good. Good. So, How are you? Okay, so do you do you go by Lee? Yeah. Letitia Lee, Letitia, whichever, Letitia. Lee whatever. or Letitia. So I grew okay. up playing basketball and they always called me Lee. It's just easier. So <laughs> I kind of answered to whatever. <laughs> I'm the same way. No, I, yeah. I, whatever, just, hey, you, uh, hey, yeah, yeah. hey, I, you. I don't really care. <laughs> I'm, over, yeah. I'm over all that stuff. Like, yeah, whatever. Exactly. Exactly. So we'll, I'm sorry, Sadie, go ahead. I was just going to say, Letitia, it's so good to see you. I, we, I don't you probably don't remember me because you met like thousands of people that day but I was just so taken by your your artwork my husband and I and uh he was like you gotta have her on your podcast I was like yeah no brainer obviously that's awesome <laughs> that's super awesome <laughs> yeah it you looks... know I get the energy um everything for me is about energy and so I feel like people are more alike than different Mm -hmm. So if it connects to me from a real place, it'll connect to another human spirit from a real place. Mm -hmm. And I just trust that and go with that and paint yeah. from there. Yeah. Yeah. It, and I and do it shows. And I agree. I think people, there's so much more we have in common. And unfortunately, news outlets and all those other love to just push whatever people don't have in common and try to just make us hate each other. But I mean, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people worth hating, but <laughs> but <laughs> but there's still, and I think I'm what's not going to deny or confirm that. <laughs> right. Yeah. And what's beautiful about your art and any kind of art, whether it's movies or books or, or, you know, um, visual art, like, you know, and your gorgeous, gorgeous paintings, um, Thank you. those all bring people together, you know, yes. and it, and it gives us this happy feeling when we're looking at it. Absolutely. Um, that has been my secret goal. Uh, kind of when I paint um, because yeah we we know the bad stuff because it's always there it's always in our face and I remember watching a movie um, Tupac Resurrection mm. and he said in it fear is stronger than love and I remember hearing that and being like no I don't want to believe that but when he explained it he said fear uh, love puts you in a in this euphoric state in this happy safe place Fear makes you react. Fear mm -hmm. makes you go into whatever, running, fighting, whatever, you know. I was like, God, that is really true. But I really thought, well, I should put more love in the world then because that's going to always have a power. So I need to mm -hmm. be going the other direction. So that's kind of how that's come about. And that that really is uh, because of my grandparent and mm -hmm. my mom and the way I was raised, you know. There are times in my life where, you know, I could have gone to the negative side of the, and my parents were like, no, no, we're not going to be racist. We're not going to be jerks. We're not going to be this. We're not going to be that. And that made me see life in a different way. Yeah. I mean, I feel yeah. like mindset, um, we just actually had a symposium last night about the mindset of authors and how it can, you know, help advance your career because it's like getting yourself in that right mindset. And, yeah. it, you know, so how do you think like, when you sit down to paint, what's that? Do you get like in a certain zone? Do you like, if, you, if, if you're angry about something, <laughs> how do you create? Those are really good questions. Um, so, um, oh, that's a good question. Painting is like oxygen for me. I, like I need it to exist. You go, like, oh, it's like breaking an arm. I'm like, no, my arm would, would heal if I couldn't paint or create in some form or fashion I think I would my spirit would die and mm -hmm. so um just loving it that much also tends to drive me towards the tra trajectory of positivity um even when it's negative I had a friend I grew up in a working class poor neighborhood so it was very blue collar and you know, a lot of people were on assistance, things like that, such and such and so. And um, I remember we we were all just innocent kids. And then as we grew older, people started to separate into sections like, okay, I'm going to go sell drugs. Okay, I'm going to go to college. Okay, I'm going to... And you could see the shifting of our unity kind of spreading apart because of the directions we chose. I say all that to say one of my dearest friends who I consider a brother was murdered and killed. Um, the irony is he actually, he started selling drugs. So he was in that life now 
And I remember coming home and finding out and he, somebody beeped at me one day and I was like, who was that? And it was him. And I, I was happy to see him. But the first thing I said to him is, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? We, we didn't grow up to do that. Right. And he's like, I know, I know. Make a long story short, he was trying to get out of that life. But in the process, he went to a club with the, some friends of his. He witnessed a murder. Someone shot one of his best friends and the guy died in his arms. I say all this to say, um, he, he was the only one out of the whole club because everybody knew who shot him. He was the only one that said, I can't look at myself in the face and not testify because mm -hmm. he was afraid that they would put a hit out on him. They put a hit out on him and they killed mm -hmm. him before he could testify. But I say all that, I, that was the toughest thing I'd ever gone through. I'd never even imagined that would be something that would happen in my lifetime, mm -hmm. knowing us and how we were as kids. And I, I did a piece, um, I did a piece called Broken. Um, and it was an acronym, but it was when I came home, my mom called me. I, I went to Elon University and I was at I was at university and my mom called me. She just didn't sound right. And she said, Sean was shot. And I was like, is he dead? She said, yes. And I was just like, what in the world? So anyway, I see all that. This piece is when I drove home and came home, he was shot close in the neighborhood and you could still see the blood stain on the um on the what they want the convenience store you can see it on the sidewalk Ugh. this is not so this is something you see in a movie this is not right. our reality what is happening this is my reality <clears throat> and so i did a piece and it's actually actually I have it right here uh, oh i'd love to see it um uh, because you're talking about negativity excuse it it has dust on it because I, I never move it but this is actually i don't know if you can see that but this yeah. is actually wow one in his head and that's where all the blood is draining out um but this piece is called broken and it's um it's an acronym so it's broken raged uh overlook nave uh emptiness and nothingness because that's exactly how i felt when i lost someone that was so dear to me that all you knew him for was his giggles and his smiles and his positivity and i was like how did you get in that life how, you know so I say that to to answer your question is when it's really bad, I, mm. I pay attention to it. I don't, I don't run from it. Um, but mm. I try to still have a message in it. So the brokenness, the, the rage, all, these are all things that we could break down and talk about each one of them in their letter, you know, but that's when you feel like nothing, when you feel like you have nothing, when you don't have the direction, you can be pulled anywhere. Right. And so, um, that's what I do with the negativity. But I always try to at some point make it a message or make it change the trajectory of it. Like this is where mm -hmm. it is, we're kidding. And so um yeah, that's that basically. painting is gorgeous. Thank like you. It's, yeah, it's, you could feel it. You could feel that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It it was a lot. It was a lot because I mean, I grew up, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do, I was like, some, a friend of mine, Elon, was like, you're not a law-abiding citizen, you're a law-abiding nerd. <laughs> like, like, I just, <laughs> so to have that be a part of my energy, it's, mm -hmm. it was a lot to try to figure out, what do I want to say? And I didn't want right. to do a portrait, people do stuff, yeah, you, you got a picture, what are you trying to say, What what's the point? of something so catastrophic happening what how do you want to talk about that so yeah right. yeah wild yeah. wild <laughs> I, i'm so curious uh because with our podcast we talk a lot with like writers and directors filmmakers mm -hmm. authors and we always talk about voice and how you find your voice as a writer as a creative for you, I'm just curious, like when when was that moment for you where you could use uh visual painting, visual art as a way to, you know, project your own voice as an artist? I've always been creating. You know, I tell people, people are like, How long have you been, you know, selling your art professionally? And I'm like, 20 years. I said, but unprofessionally, since my mom's been feeding me applesauce, I don't know <laughs> anything different, right? It's just been something that I just picked up. My grandmother, she's 97 now, and she still talks about how when I was five, uh, I would follow her all around the house when I would stay with her for the summers. And I just have all these papers like a pig pen and a peanut. <laughs> you know, I would just carry them all around and have all my stuff. She'd go make biscuits. I'd sit on the floor and I'd draw. Da, da, da. Look, grandma. 
And she's like, she kept all of them. She's mm-hmm. like, I knew he was going to do something creative because it was just in you. Um, I don't know. I just, um, for me, well, actually I do kind of know my mom. So when I, my grandmother would just indulge me, <laughs> my mother was not indulging as much. She's like, I got a lot to do. I can't sit here indulging you all day. So I'd say, tell me something to draw, mom. She's like, oh, go draw a house. Da, da, da. I draw a house. Da, da, da. Um, tell me something else to draw. Cause I wouldn't draw all day. And she's like, look, this is going to get really old really <laughs> quickly. I need you to go outside. I need you to just walk around and be out in the elements. And if something inspires you, create that. Now go outside. <laughs> and I took that literal and that's how I've been creating my whole life. So mm. a lot, that's why a lot of times um, my stuff is so different. People say, it's like, there's seven different artists in here. I was like, they are, and they're all me. <laughs> they're all in here, you know, but um, for me, I just really like expressing what I see my art is kind of my love letter to the world so this is what I see and this is where I see we can go um and that's kind of the gist you know in a nutshell and and really I get a lot of inspiration from people so I'm talking to people I'm having a conversation I'm like how can I how can I say that in a painting but it's always you know how they talk about Eminem, how he's always writing. He's always, it's always mm-hmm. in my brain. Like this weekend I had a show and I'm already, I'm going to do a piece from a picture, from a kiss that I saw frolicking. I was like, that's so great. And I'm, um, I did a piece called peanut butter and chocolate. It was my niece who's biracial and she met her cousin, black cousin for the first time. And they hit it off and they were five. And when it was time to go, it was family reunion. It was time to go. They didn't want to leave. So they literally grabbed each other. And I was like, get them apart. We got to go. I was like, I'm not tearing that up. And I took a picture <laughs> and I painted it later. People loved it. Peanut butter and chocolate. I just did a mural for a company called uh, Four Kids. Great company. It's for it's a focus on, on kids that are homeless. And in order to make sure they don't fall through any cracks and they're able to actually walk the true and traverse the uh, great life and be a full society citizen of society um you got to get the parents on board so they take the parents and teach them skill sets that they never had and then once they get them out of the shelter then they teach them about money like it's a complete incredible organization if you never heard of it did a did a did a mural for them but i did it in the shelter part instead of the administration part which was so incredible because i met all these kids the kids worked with me on the mural a little bit and I'm talking to all these kids and I got these great pictures. So I got this one cute picture of this white kid and this black kid hugging each other. And just natural. Mm-hmm. They got so comfortable with each other. And I just finished it. I haven't put it on the website yet, but it's called Chocolate and Vanilla. And mm-hmm. then I saw the other kids and I was like, hmm, she might be almond. They're like, like I'm just <laughs> flavors, right? And just keep going with that because I have so many. But I get inspired by the people I deal with. It's like, it's cyclical. It's like mm-hmm. we talk, something goes in my my heart and it feels really good and I'm like I'm gonna paint something that says something about that you know and then I have certain things that I do series on because people love them so. yeah no that's incredible I just keep thinking yeah. of the one uh that you did of your grandmother and your aunt um in the kitchen and her taking care of your grandmother and just it's just so beautiful yeah first time I ever did that um so it was 2020 <laughs> picture it before COVID. Uh, I was 2020. I come to Florida um, for the winter. I usually stay at my grandmother and my aunt. Uh, That's my base while I do all the shows and I come back there. And so this particular year, I'm on my way to a show and it literally closes off. I'm like, I don't have a job. Like 20 Mm. years, I don't have a job. And I said, you know what? My grandmother at the time was 94. I said, I'm never going to get this much time with her again. I'm going to stay here until this stuff clears up or whatever happens. And we were just going to hang. I stayed there for six months. I still mm-hmm. worked. I could work from there, but it wasn't because I didn't have shows. I didn't have to be back in the studio. Mm-hmm. I could paint in my aunt's back porch, you know, whatever. And so um, they're just doing everyday things. And I'm at the time I'm thinking, oh, that'll be a great painting. But that was the extent of it. So when I got to Winter Park, that's the first time I showed them. Um, I put them out because they were coming and I wanted them to see themselves represented in my booth. And I'm talking and I'm explaining it to someone that comes in and my aunt is across just standing and we're just kind of chatting, whatever. But as I'm looking at them and talking about them, what I realize is this isn't about 
directly my grandmother and my, and my aunt. Um, this is about how my aunt takes care of my grandmother. Mm -hmm. This is about how my aunt has sacrificed these years to make sure that she fills up the cracks again and lets my grandmother walk all the way home without any dip in her quality of life, without any mm -hmm. dip in her safety. It just made it better, right? Mm -hmm. My aunt yeah. did that. That's who my aunt is, right? Mm -hmm. My superhero. That's who my aunt yeah. is. And so, and so it became so much bigger, but people are viscerally responding to them. I had a lady yesterday and uh, last weekend, a collector of mine, she said, I came back because you weren't here. I just wanted to come say hi to you. So we we're talking for a little bit. And she asked me about the piece and she starts crying. Mm -hmm. And then she shows me a picture of her where she was taking care of her mother. Her mother's passed on now, but it's the back of her. And she's just like, like she's tired. She's taking a break, yeah, mm -hmm. sitting on the couch. And her sister takes the picture and puts it on Facebook and talk about her, her, how much she struggled or how much she sacrificed but that's what that is to me and I spoke to a lady in the literary uh, world and she's like you need to make a children's book out of this mm. and finish up the other pieces mm. that you have and make a children's book out of this she said in 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 the world in the literary world there are a lot of books on grandmas helping people but there are very few on people taking care of the grandmother yeah that's brilliant. I got to figure out how to get connected and learn how to write a book. And yeah. That because I think that, and that's who I want to be. That's what I want my legacy to be. I'm helping people. I'm giving people thoughts. This just, just think about it. You don't mm -hmm. have to agree with me. Just think about it. Right. Yep. Um, and so I am going to, I am going to probably write that book. <laughs> and I will tell you from a children's book perspective, mm -hmm. um, there are authors who are just authors and then there are authors who are authors, illustrators mm -hmm. and the power that you could bring to it with your, not just your words, but also the images. I mean, unbelievable. I, I'm a hundred percent for this. My dad, um, my dad has passed, but those last couple of years, my watching my mother be his like full-time caregiver and having help come in to help her. It is the most exhausting emotionally and physically it's so hard and kudos to everybody out there who is doing it right now but you also are heroes yeah and but it's also important for people to cry uncle every once in a while and say I need help like I can't do this by myself and it's okay to ask for help um, absolutely it's a lot it is a lot a lot a lot um, my my wife's mother recently passed and um, we were the second team, not mm -hmm. the first team, yeah. the first team. And it was her brother, you know, usually you hear it being a woman, but it was her brother. He talked about another superhero, her brother and his wife, they just beyond, beyond. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, you have such a respect and, and it also gives you education on, okay, who do I have left that's older than me? Mm -hmm. How am I going to be able to be those things that they need? And it is exhausting. It could take it can deplete you quick. Yeah. So asking for help is very important. And what's great too, though, is like from a perspective of an artist, like you're mm -hmm. finding those human moments and that everybody can relate to, whether you're a caregiver, whether you know, where you're in that situation, not in that situation, you can still relate to it. You can still imagine what that's like, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but finding those little moments of humanity, like as authors, you know, you put that theme into the book you're writing, you know, but it, as a, a visual artist, you're putting it literally cr painting a picture for people to see, you know, mm -hmm. like, and hope they it. connect with it. Yeah. And yeah. Hope they connect with it. Yeah. Um, back to you talking about how uh, caregivers, I really feel like there's, there's all kinds of love, but that is some of the strongest love mm -hmm. you will ever see because it takes a certain kind of sacrifice you have to really have something else there to be able to do that you know yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah you're right it, it um being able to create it takes thought like how do I want to do it mm -hmm. I know what I want to say how do I want to do it um sometimes it's just from pictures and the pictures have to have a certain energy I know I remember doing a commission uh, uh on Greg Allman uh, right after he passed and the guy was like, my my father-in-law loves Greg Allman, blah, 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 blah. 
you know, I said, well, let's talk about it. And he said, I'll send you some pictures that I like. And he sent me pictures. I was like, these pictures aren't going to work. They don't have mm -hmm. the energy. If you want my painting mm -hmm. and a certain energy, this is not it. Okay, let me find some pictures for you. So it took me about a month to find some good ones because, you know, he, he lived a long life. So he has the youthful ones, the ones in the middle and that he's aged. So I try to figure out what's the best one that actually looks like him. You could do <laughs> something and it looks like Tina, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It's not quintessential Tina. So I have a piece, the idea of uh, uh, Tina Turner. And I went through a lot of pictures. And there's pictures of her with her beautiful legs, but they, it didn't translate, right? And so, um, yeah, it, it is, it's very important to, to have the right energy. The right energy is there. I, it feels pretty easy to me. It feels like, oh, okay, well, this isn't block and step. You know, let's just be there and experience the moment. It's be in the moment. Like when I see my paintings, I know where I was when I painted it. Mm -hmm. So I try to really be connected emotionally when I'm painting because I know that these aren't going to stay in my hands. I'm going to give this to someone whose energy is connected to that and, and they're going to have that uh, to spread to the to the world. Do you have um, certain paintings that you just will never part with? I'm assuming Broken is one of them. Yes, that was the first one. Yeah. Um, you can't see it. I'll pull it off the wall for you. I was I started selling this because my whole thought was these are not your paintings. You are the you are the um I don't know, you're you're the the thing that it goes through, but mm -hmm. do it and put it out there, right? Mm -hmm. But this is my grandmother making biscuits, right? And right on the left side of that is where I would always draw and, <laughs> and paint and stuff. But um she was showing my she was showing somebody how to make biscuits that day. Uh, no, before and then she came back and she made biscuits. And I took some pictures of her and I was like, I love this. And I started to sell it and someone tried to buy it and I, my body just reacted. I was like, mm. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and um, those are the only two. Because um, uh, that's well, what's interesting it. about being a, a a painter is that like you, this is a one and done. Like it's a, yeah. as opposed to being an author, you've got books, you could just do a reprint of the book. You could sell a bunch yeah. of books and same thing with filmmakers, a lot of tickets to the seats, you know, and, mm -hmm. but in your world, it's, this is it, unless you decide to do prints of things and, you know, stuff like and that. And I have but, images and I have a great camera. So I have, I can get images if I want images and that's fine. But um, for me, um, it's really, I really do believe that my paintings are not about me. It's mm -hmm. not about, um, I need it to exist, but I don't need to own them. Mm -hmm. right? I don't need to have possession of them. Um, I need them to be free out in the world and, you know, some good things are going to happen to some, some bad things are going to happen to some. It just depends. I did a commission for someone and her boyfriend was volatile and put a knife right through the piece. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I had to, I had to come to the reality. Once they're out, you know, these people yeah. are basically adopting these, and and I hope that they take care of them. But different people have different. Mental health is real. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Yeah. And and the reality of the matter is, I don't know what they're gonna do. So I just gotta hope that they go up to loving homes and people who love them and appreciate them like I do. Yeah, yeah. That's all. But I don't, I don't have control of that, and I need to be okay with that. Yeah. Right. It shouldn't stop me or, or change how I create. Still do what feels good to your heart and to your soul um, and put it out there and, and trust that people will connect. Yeah. And respect yeah. it. Yeah. I Speaking of it. cameras and images, uh, one thing that I, I <laughs> noticed when I was at your booth at Winter Park was uh, <laughs> these young men taking photos of your Trying paintings. <laughs> With signs that say, please do not take photos, but you're yeah. saying how they would, you know, within five minutes, that's, that's up on Etsy. Um, can you just talk about like that? Like, cause that is such a real thing that artists like you are dealing with that. I don't thing. think we understand it a, truly. It is a real, real thing. So um, where there is money to be made, there is uh, always going to be the same stuff. People are like, oh, you're an artist. You get to do this. You get to do that. I'm like, life is a triangle. And as you move up that ladder, there's less and less space. I, mm -hmm. my, my professor told me that on graduation day. And he was just like, remember that, you know, da, 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 da. So I'm listening to him. And I told my niece, my niece, um, she recently graduated from uh, 
uh, UPenn. And I was, I told her that when she graduated from high school and when I came to visit her and um, she's not, she doesn't have like tattoos all over her body or nothing like that, but she had one. Like, I was like, what is that under your arm? She's like, it's the triangle you told me about. I, mm -hmm. I put that on to remember as I'm trying to, you know, traverse this workforce how life really is and what how hard I need to work to be to get to that place um yeah so theft is real theft is prevalent and my first bout with it it was 2005 I believe it was really early on in my uh career and I'm there and I'm selling art and everything's good it's in Norfolk Virginia and I see this guy and this, this ages me, let you know how old I am. The, I see this guy on the second story of Have a Nice Day Cafe. Do you guys remember those uh, places? It was a it was a place like 20 something years ago, but it's, he was on the, with a telescopic lens, mm. making pictures. Now I'm like, what is that guy doing? Is he, he, it feels creepy, but I still don't know what he's doing. Now the old heads, as we call them, they were like, quick put your art on the ground on the grass because we were at the end so we took our tents out so they can't mm. they can see all of our stuff because we're about to break down and they start putting their stuff on the ground face forward so the man can't see the images and i was oh, like wow. oh he's doing art <laughs> like he's not taking pictures of like salaciously of women or he's trying to funny story so not funny funny um so of course i go get the police involved i'm thinking gotta be some kind of recourse and he's like well technically he's not committing a crime because he didn't print them da, 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 da. later on I found out with us paying for that spot that is our spot and we have the right to to protect it as privacy that it does mm -hmm. I had to learn this I stood right in his face and he just laughed at me because I, I was talking to, I was talking to the police I was talking to him and he just laughed because he does it yeah. and and they knew him they said that he, he was notorious for going to the west coast stealing art and selling it more on the east coast stealing east coast art and stealing it more on the west because it's very rarely rare that we're by coast mm -hmm. right physically getting back and forth and so i was in pittsburgh three rivers which is where this guy is from the oh wow i recognized him right away he didn't know it was me but he came into my tent and I had a limited edition. And oh, because of him, I should say this, because of him, I started signing my giclés in metallic because at that time it was hard to pull metallic off uh, on a print. Mm. So he's he's looking and he's talking to me and I just talk because he doesn't know who I am. And then he he says, you know, I really like this piece right here. He said, you should sign them in, in black. Right. And I said, no, I try to avoid the thefts, thieves from stealing my artwork. Da, 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 da. And he looked at me really funny. And then I just smiled and he just smiled. But I was like, he's literally he has no moral <laughs> compass at all. He's here trying to steal my art and get me to sign so he can make more copies of it because it, it you know. And so um, then he tells me, oh, yeah, me and my brother, we have we sell prints and um we make five hundred thousand dollars a year, and I'm just sitting here saying oh, you're wow. making half a million dollars off of people's art that they have no idea. So you're making all this money off them, and you can't even give them a percentage. Mm -mm. I'm surprised even... he doesn't like buy pieces and then photograph them at home in like a studio, and then does he do that too? That's what he was trying to buy mine, but he wanted me yeah. to sign it in black mm. so he could take the Perfect. image. Yeah. The, so. I can't tell you all that he did, but I know it's five hundred thousand dollars a year's worth, <laughs> however he does yes, it, right? Geez. But that was the first real lesson that I got, where I have to think like a thief so I can protect myself from one. Mm -hmm. and so it's, it's it's weird. I'm I'm talking to someone, a, a collector, potential collector, and um, I can see in my peripheral a certain language, body language that they do that they're about to take a picture. So I say, please don't take pictures, and they say, oh. And they'll put it back up. Or the ones that I say, please don't take a picture. And they hear me. And they'll, they'll, I, they don't hear me. And then I yell, do not take a picture. And then they're like, oh, oh. But then they run away and they got the picture. Mm -hmm. So it's so much. So so you know that every time you go to the show, somebody's going to try to steal something. I had an, an incident where incident where I was um I was in a Cape May, New Jersey doing a show. And I had these bathrooms by myself. And when I came back, I saw these two older women they were artists in the in the region in my neighborhood part and uh they were like shoving this guy and making him leave and then he like 
left. And I was like, what's happening? They were in my tent. They said he was going to each piece and like, oh while and, and evidently he was waiting for me to leave. He was watching me, waiting for me to, he knew I had to leave at some point. I got his bathroom at some point in the day. Yeah, it's crazy. Just it's get crazy. a get a attached bag to yourself and just pee in the bag. <laughs> some depends or something. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Put some depends on just yeah it's it's crazy it's crazy and then you don't want those folk changing the energy of what you mm, do right yeah yeah you have to figure out how to compartmentalize you have to compartmentalize it has to be that's that person majority of these people are coming they don't even some people will take pictures they don't know please don't take pictures oh i'm sorry you know i wanted to show it to da, 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 da. i said it's on the website you can see it on the website but um on the website, I have my name over it. So if you want to take my name out of it, you got to do work to actually get the piece. So, you know, I feel more comfortable with that. Um, but yeah, there's so much. A friend of mine, he uh, saw his work on Etsy and he he got his lawyer to call Etsy, got informed with them and, and, and contact with them. And is like, we're going to sue you for letting them sell our mm-hmm. intellectual property. Mm-hmm. Next thing. Yeah. yeah. But that person's going to, hey, that person's a weasel. That weasel is going to go somewhere else and weasel his way somewhere mm-hmm. else and sell it from another. Because now he has the images. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So you got to let a lot of that go. Protect what you can and and let the rest go. Yeah. Which leads me to say AI. Ugh. I know, <laughs> right? Right? Our, oh, our no. best friend. <laughs> AI. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's horrible and and all you see these also too you see these images that ai creates and uh, it's they're scary. not good yeah they're not good but they're gonna be they're gonna be yeah mm-hmm. this is scary it's 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 truly scary um you know there's I've, i was in one show and i can't remember which one it was but it was saying something about that like no ai no blah blah mm-hmm. blah, blah blah you have to show video of you creating it like people wow. are starting to do that, but you're going to have to, because people are, you know, I started noticing maybe 10 years ago, maybe a little longer, uh, there had, there started to be a lot of mixed media, but the mixed media was like the pictures and then they would paint over it, mm-hmm. but it wasn't them creating the picture. It wasn't a picture that they took. It wasn't like, it was like, they saw something cool and then they did add some flowers or added something to it. Okay, fine. But I don't know if you call that fine art. I don't I don't know what the definition mm-hmm. is. But it doesn't feel right, but I don't know why. And I don't yeah. know how to explain it, right. Like I did everything from scratch. I, I didn't make the canvas, okay. But I sketched, <laughs> I looked at it, I I I thought about it, I took the picture, I had the conversation, and now I'm trying to um from an organic place create something that will grow roots and and reach the sunshine and hopefully the right energies will come and say I see what you're doing I feel what you're doing I want to invest in that Mm -hmm. that AI is tricky it's tricky because you never want to be a person that says you can't do this you can't do that but what line does it cross where it's, it's deceitful some mm-hmm. some stuff when you're when you're doing commercials and you're doing that it's deceitful. Um, on that level, it's deceitful because you're not creating it and you're and you're making money off of it. It's this it's it's deceitful. Um, you're 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 getting people excited about something that isn't exactly how you're explaining it. It's disingenuous yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's something good about it. I'm still waiting to find out what that is. I, I, mm-hmm. I, 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 it does not make my heart happy. It does not make me feel good when I, when I think of AI and what it, what it produces. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's tricky. Yeah. Yeah. Like even in my own house, I have some original pieces of art that like one of my uh, mother's best friends painted. And I look at them and I, one of the things I love about art is I look at them and I think about the artist I, I, mm-hmm. I think about how the painting makes me feel and that it's it's beautiful and aesthetically pleasing to me. But what I really think about is the person who created it. So yeah. like that's what I think is fun about us having the opportunity to talk to you and even looking on your website and watching like the, the videos and seeing you create. It's like, 
it's not just what you create. It's, it's, it's that it's you. It's a, literally a part of you. And, it is. and, and then no, getting people to know you a little bit by having like conversations with us, with other people, or people who come into your, your booth, yeah. that then it gives them an opportunity to say, gosh, I really like her as a mm-hmm. person. Like I like spending time with her. I liked her energy. I liked her attitude. I liked her mindset. Right. right. When I have this piece of her on my wall, it's going to bring that energy to my home and make it a better place. Three things. Number one, I always tell people when you're about to buy art, think about how it makes you feel Mm -hmm. because you're going to have that in your home every day. You can have some really great piece of art that's maybe a little bit darker, but it's funky and it's awesome. But do you want that energy on you every day? Yeah, I do in the in the in the basement where I am. Okay, I'll get it for that spot. <laughs> okay, but in my kitchen, I want something bright. I want something da da da. You know, buy from the way it makes you feel, and then figure out where you want to put that in your home. Number one, number two. Um, yeah, it is AI is is making it and social media is making it so kids are just less social in a real way in a mm-hmm. in a in a formidable way in a in a in a in a physical way mm-hmm. people are kids are so awkward these days like mm-hmm. little things i'll ask a simple question and like say i'm at they're at work and i'm somewhere and i'm needing something i have a question and they at they answer me the answer that's on the website like it's like a robot, right? And I say, well, yeah, I understand that, but is there da 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 da? da? I'll ask a second question, and they just look like a deer in headlights. And I said, "Do you have a manager?" And I speak to your manager because maybe they can answer that very basic question. <laughs> um, okay, they can't either. What in the world? I said, "Well, could you maybe do da 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 da?" They said, "Oh yeah, I could do that." Like it's <laughs> like. It's like um, poor kids, which in tune is poor us because these are the kids that are going to be wiping our diapers and cleaning us. Exactly. But will they? um, Because I'm not sure. I'm not either. I'm not either, which is why I need to hurry up and make that book stat so I can help the young ones come up. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Take care of the elderly. You're going to be old at some point too. Exactly. Um, And and what was number three? Number three. Oh, when you're talking about liking someone, I remember being... um, at a show and the guy was him and his wife uh ended up getting a piece of art and he's like your artwork is incredible but it's nothing compared to your personality Mm -hmm. and I thought that was so sweet he's like we just fell in love with you right and maybe fourth thing my mentor says to me um I remember him saying to me one time um people are buying an experience Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that never left me because they are by an, ex- an, an experience. And it made me think of Michael Jordan when he said, I play hard every night because there's one kid that is only going to get to see me once and they spend all their money to get into to that thing. And they don't want to see me play like, I don't care. Oh wow. They want to see that Jordan. And so that that's one of the things that pushes me. And I just little things like that. And um, I just really always want to put my best foot forward even if I'm having a bad day Mm -hmm. because they're coming here they're showing up they got ready they got dressed they got you know all the things to get here they paid for the parking they sometimes got to pay for the show to get in how am I going to look just looking down reading a book because I'm mad like Mm -hmm. not trying to connect my whole thing is trying to connect to the human spirit yeah I can't do that if I'm not talking and I'm not me Right. Yeah. Well, you're just yeah. present too. I mean, having been through all those booths know. there, you go into a booth and you're like, oh, this stuff is really interesting. And then you try to find the person and either they're too cool to talk to you or they're <laughs> just not there. And you're like, well, I guess I'm moving on. <laughs> Me too. Cause I buy a lot of art. Yeah. I, you know, there's been art, people art that I come into their booth and it's really cool. And I'm like, and I'll speak. And then they're mm-hmm. going out you know hi like they don't really i'm just like this is a really cool pick. and they're just like not nice. okay have a great day I'm, yeah you know, i'm gonna push I, it and, but... I, and i have to say like i have an antique shop as yeah. well that's one of my many hats i wear and i have that same attitude at the shop like i want them to have a great experience at the shop mm-hmm. i don't care if they buy anything i could care less i want them to have 
had walk out of that place going, she was really nice. That place was really cool. Like that. Exactly. And I mean, because they're these unique pieces that are mm -hmm. hundreds of years old, I feel oh. like I'm just a foster mother to them. Right. And, right, right. <laughs> but like, like you were saying, when that person like shoves a knife in your painting, <laughs> like I can't help if somebody's going to take this gorgeous tiger maple dresser and paint it purple. Like I, oh, I, gosh. It, it, I just hold my <laughs> breath and pray that they appreciate it and nice. they don't do that. But you, at some point you, you know, you have to let it go, but there are those dealers who are totally snotty. Like there's a town near us called Hudson. You go in there. A lot of the, if any of you Hudson dealers are listening to this, stop it. Like you, <laughs> you go in there and they look at you like you can't afford to be here. You can't like, and it just, it takes all that whole mindset, that whole energy. Like, I don't care what it is, whether it's a small right. business, whether it's an artist, what, whatever it is, I mean, go in respecting what people do and, and don't suck. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> that should be a t-shirt. Don't suck. Don't, right. <laughs> don't suck. Yeah. <laughs> don't suck today. <laughs> yeah. It's not today. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy. I, I don't, I don't understand. I do understand, but I don't understand. So I don't understand in general what you get out of that, right? Mm -hmm. But I do understand hurt people hurt people. I do understand yeah. insecure people uh, hurt people or or they, they we were just talking about this. I had a friend that I saw a couple of days ago. Shout out to Anissa. I hadn't seen her in 30 years. Mm. Uh, she emailed me and she's like I love your work I'm so proud of you blah, 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 blah. so we had lunch the other day and we were just talking and chatting because I, I did a show at home uh, I'm from uh, Hampton uh, region of Hampton Virginia that area mm -hmm. and so I was there and uh, she we talked about how I was bullied my freshman year playing basketball we played basketball together and how I was bullied and I had never had any I never had any understanding of how to deal with the bully and I grew up with all boys so I laughed at her I said if I had just popped her in the nose once we would have fought and then we would have been okay and the year would have been good right <laughs> but that's how boys do it right but the 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 emotionals the emotional mm -hmm. stuff that women go through it was I was not ready for, I was not prepared for that in any way <laughs> no. shape or form. No. and I went I went inward and I was just mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and so make a long story short I was talking to her about the, the bullying and she's like oh I remember and I was like, you know what's really weird? You don't know what you need until it happens. I've never had anyone that would ha had been able to corroborate that. I never had anyone that they just have to trust me on my word. But to actually have, I said, okay, so I'm not crazy. Y'all yeah. all saw that I was being horribly, horribly treated. But that girl who treated me really, really horribly, and she did it for quite a few years. She played softball too. My softball coach was incredible. She was an angel on the softball. So I knew she could not do it. It wasn't like she had to do it on her body. Just she knew what she could get away with. That's what bullies do. They mm -hmm. know what they can get away mm -hmm. with and what they mm -hmm. can't get away with. My junior year, she was her senior year. She was playing basketball with, with me as well. And my mom came to almost every game. This particular game, she didn't come. Uh, so what my mom did was she wrote a letter and put uh, lipstick on it and kissed it and put it in the um, the the office and they gave it to me when I got out of school because we were going to the gym to go catch the bus to the to the to whatever game we had now now this woman never spoke to me unless it was to antagonize me it was antagonized look away like she doesn't exist antagonized look away like she doesn't exist so I know her voice right I'm walking in the gym and I hear someone say Lee and I know it's her but I don't know what to do because I never had her speak to me in a normal voice and I'm like and I just kind of look and I was like, yeah. And she says, your mother wrote you a letter. And I just walked over to her and I picked up the letter and I sat down because I'm uncomfortable. This is a new thing. And it's three years, never spoken to me. And so I, I open up the letter. I'm all not going to be there. Da, da, da. Um, and I close it up. And I'm about to move away slow because I'm kind of close to her. Mm -hmm. there. And then she says, can I read it? <laughs> and I just say, <laughs> I just give it to her. I don't know what's going on here. 
she reads it and I watch her face, ladies. And everything shifted in that moment for me because before I was trying to survive her. Mm-hmm. I was just trying to, my mom wouldn't let me quit. Basketball was like my second love. Of, if art is my first, basketball is my second. And I just didn't want to be there because she made my life miserable. And you could just see the sadness on her face. Mm-hmm. You could see that in that moment, I saw she wants love like my mom gives me mm-hmm. love. He sees me as what she doesn't have. Mm-hmm. She, um, she that she's a young kid and she's trying to navigate her feelings and her hurt and her pain. And I'm the easiest target because I look so happy, bright, and sunshiny. Mm-hmm. Right. And um I had to forgive her in that moment. I was mm-hmm. I was 16, but I just remember being like, This girl's in pain. Mm-hmm. And she never bullied me again after that day. And you know what she said after she finished reading it? That was nice. No, oh, wow. it was like a completely different. But I felt so, and I'm so happy ab- about being on te- television right now, not crying about it. But I used to cry about that. <laughs> it, it. It pained me to know that she was going through that much pain. Right? I don't know her because we never got a chance to to be real teammates. Yeah. But she is my teammate, and I don't want pain. I don't want suffering. I don't want all of that. And I knew in that moment that she was getting that. You know, because there was a lot of other stuff that I knew but my mom and her mom played softball together so she, we should have been good yeah but mm-hmm. her 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 jealousy and frustration her her pain made yeah. her do the things she did so her have, people her they do and, and 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 that's that goes on with whether it's art or whether it's something else so yeah have you yeah. ever done a painting about like that kind of feeling like that like jealousy kind of I have, but now that we're talking about it, I'm gonna have to yeah yeah because I feel like you could do something really cool I don't know what that's up to you Mm -hmm. (laughs) but no no because it's been on my mind a lot I I mean there have been moments where I was like I wish I could find her she's still in Mm -hmm. Hampton I wanted somebody ironically the person who my my brother who was shot had a brother and I reconnected with him and he's like yeah we still hang out with so-and-so I was like you here and I was like, because because ironically, I still saw her mother. She had some she had some problems after school and stuff. Um, but her mom took care of her kids. Her mom, you know, stepped up. And uh, I would always ask, "How is she doing? How is, is she okay?" Da 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 da. Um, and uh, I was looking for her mom because I couldn't find her. She played softball for a very long time, but I was like, I need to check on her, make sure she's okay. I don't know if anybody's checking on her. I don't know where she lives. I know she got married to her last name. Like I'm looking Mm -hmm. for her mother because I still have a connection with her mother because my mother plays softball with her. I probably, I probably should reach out to her Mm -hmm. Uh, just because, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like it might be good. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Like, like like I can picture like in the painting I don't know what the painting is but I just picture like the lipstick kiss Mm -hmm. you know what I mean like somewhere on it yeah yeah Yeah, definitely definitely maybe you should do something like that find her and give it to her Hmm. Hmm. now I don't know I don't know if she likes art I don't want nobody stabbing (laughs) (laughs) yeah right (laughs) but 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 ironically that sounds like that would be a great children's book on bullying Mm -hmm. yeah like yeah. one, per- one person's perspective and what they went through and then you know somewhere in the end be able to explain that um the by other the side time, by the time we're yeah. done with this conversation we're gonna have you be a full-fledged <laughs> author <laughs> just like a bunch of children's books it. yeah but i, I just yeah. think that would be a great lesson um because people are doing the best that they can people are doing the best that they can i remember my yeah. my niece uh, my niece, my biracial niece that I was telling you about earlier, when Trump first got elected, she really struggled. And her, she knew that her grandmother, her white grandmother voted for Trump. And we're all together. And she says, how can someone that loves me um, mm-hmm. vote for a man that hates me? Mm-hmm. And I stopped her because I said, hey, because her grandmother's right there. Her grandmother doesn't isn't trying to hurt her grandbaby her grand she loves her grandbaby she's not thinking like that right Mm -hmm. and I said well I can tell you this I said the guy with the with the KKK Ku Klux Klan garment on 
when he goes home and takes that off, he gets on his knees and hugs his baby girl and kiss and 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 hugs his son. He thinks he's doing that for the right reasons. He's not maybe thinking about all the other things and what he's hurting and what he's did da da da. But you gotta meet people where they are because I can hate you and you can hate me, but where is that gonna get you? It's mm-hmm. really not gonna be purple. It's gonna keep us to the red and the and the blue. And so it's hard. Did I say it was hard? It's hard. <laughs> what is our country going to be if we don't keep trying? Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, there's people you could, you can not, you can disagree with someone's political opinion, but there are so many other things about that person. So mm-hmm. many other things that if you yeah. take, you know, one party, whichever you one you don't agree yeah. with, and you put them all yeah, in yeah, one yeah. bucket and fill it with hate. It, uh-huh. like that's not going to get us anywhere and Mm-mm. maybe yeah. focus on the and things a, we can agree on the divided country is easy to rule mm-hmm. and that and that is and that is the reality if if we don't figure out how to get our egos out of it we're gonna yeah. we're gonna be in trouble our country's gonna be in more trouble i should say so yeah yeah 100%. yeah percent. yeah yeah all we need is art all we need is yes. art to, to solve all we the need problems. is art last last question i guess because i know we're totally out of time but uh i know that you travel a lot for your work as well and your art and you you had even mentioned that you kind of work from the road as well like how do you find how do you find time to just create and give yourself that moment and you know clarity and peace and creativity mind mindset well i can tell you that Time management is very important. Mm. Um, if you don't know how to time manage, and then with COVID, I, I was kind of sluggish. I don't know if I was in a depression or not, but I, it was like it took so much longer to do things. And I'm fighting because I'm a fighter, fight, fight or freeze. I'm a fighter. And it was like I was swinging, swinging, and I was no further out of the hole that I felt that I was in. So I just had to keep going. But I don't know. I, I I do believe that um, because I feel like art is a part of me in such a DNA way mm. that um, I can feel that I'm not, I can, I can know when I'm not painting a lot because I don't feel good. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'll get, I'm like, let me just paint, let me just paint the backdrop of the sky. Just the feeling of the brushing uh, brings me back. Right. Um, I really, I really don't know how to explain it, except because I have been able to communicate with people, they feed me. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have, and then from there, paintings come. I don't sit and say, no, I'm not going to paint today. No, I have a book. I have that Eminem sketchbook or whatever of, I need to do this piece. I need to do this piece. When I get a chance, then I need to come back and do that. Or maybe, I, oh, well, I think I'll do this one now because what happens is once I capture the emotion, the emotion of something, it's there. So I don't have to paint it at a certain time. I like, I did a painting of my niece when she was five or six. And I think she was 17 when I painted it. But when I go to paint it, all the emotions surge back out and then I create. Mm. It's just like, I just hold them and then I open it up and then something's there. And I say, oh, let's pick this one. And I just go with it. I just trust. I just believe. I just have the faith that it's going to work out. So just push forward mm-hmm. and it and it always tends to work out. Yeah. Belief. Yeah. Belief in what I'm doing is, is I'm on the right path. I'm on the right traje- trajectory and uh, to stick with that and let the other people let the world tell me if I'm doing what's good or what's what's not good you know that, that'll be that <laughs> I was in uh I was in Amsterdam last year and I got to see Van Gogh is one of my favorite artists and I got to see um uh, his works in person it was just incredible mm. but they had a lot of they had a lot of quotes of of things he'd said and one of his quotes, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, probably trashing it, but I, I'll do the best that I can. He said something to the effect of uh, all the scholars and all the um, people who are 
dissecting the work, you can do all of that. I don't care about that. I care about how it makes you feel. I care about how it makes you feel. And I, I was just like, he and I would have been cool together. Like he and I would have because he's just his thing is about emotion and feeling. Right. And and, and I, I think that's what the world needs more of. Yeah. Art. Do you think you would have stopped him from cutting off his own ear or would you like just go I for say, it? Can and we make talk it... about it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not gonna it's your ear. Can we, can we have a discussion about it? <laughs> Before you cut it off so you can hear me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, ladies, well, thank you so much. Thank yeah, thank you. you. Thanks this for your really art fun. and chatting oh. with us. And yeah, yeah. I, when, you, when your books come out, like, let us know. We're, I love it. When your books We're <laughs> here to, to spread the word and, you know, oh, share the love, you. too. So. I yeah. appreciate that. I really do. Um, it's, you know, I remember telling you, hey, spread the love. And when you sent me the email saying, I can do more than that. I was like, yeah. okay, then I'm good with that. <laughs> anywhere, anywhere, anywhere and any way possible to get positivity out and um, let it spread, I think is a good thing. So yeah. I appreciate yeah. And we and also it's nice, like, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice. Nice yeah. to meet you too. And we also like to encourage people to do different yeah. mediums. You know, it's not like writers can just pick up a paintbrush and paint, but yeah. we like are, but you can, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, you can correct. pick up. Yeah. Yes. And, um, uh, but it's just getting people to understand that, like you said, it's about how our art, no matter what it is, makes people feel mm -hmm. and that it's an important thing to put out into the world. And it really um, is. And it's yeah. so valuable. It's so valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I always tell people when people say, how much is this? And well, how many hours did you pay? And I said, the better question is, how does it make you feel? Mm -hmm. It's a whole life to, to hone the skill, but how does it make you feel? Mm -hmm. And and if you came in here, you like, I had people say, this is my kind of art, but this is fabulous. Mm -hmm. That's loving, right? That's yeah. love. That's love, right? So pass yeah. it on, get it and pass yeah. it on. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, thank you so much. Uh, send us any like information if you have any and there are like tours coming up or places that you're going to be that we could also throw on the our site. Put into, and our, put into our show notes. Our show notes, yeah. So. That's fantastic. Thank yeah. you, ladies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely, course, definitely. I will. Do you ever go to the West Coast or are you only East Coast? I, I, I did the West Coast last year. I did La Quinta, La Quinta um, mm -hmm. in Southern California. Yeah, that was fun. That, that was the first time I'd gone that far. And the scenery, oh my God, the, the open space. I just, I kept singing, wide open spaces. <laughs> room to make the big mistakes. I just, it was gorgeous. It was life-changing. I want to do so many pieces on that, but I got to get to it. Yeah. I got to get to it. <laughs> You'll get there. You'll get there after the book, after the children's book. After the children's book. Yes. <laughs> after the two children's books. The two. That's yeah. it. That's it. <laughs> You're going to get a two book deal. That's it. Sounds good to me from your mouth. Reckless Creatives <laughs> is a Pipeline Artist original podcast. Like, subscribe, and follow us on social media at Pipeline Artists. And find more info at pipelineartists.com slash listen. Until next time, stay reckless.